The CRM in the Beatrix 24 Social Collaboration Platform is a comprehensive solution for managing interactions with clients, customers, and other important contacts. We're going to be looking at how to set up the CRM, its working interface, and also the sales cycle, meaning the daily work that you're going to be doing in your CRM. The CRM has its own menu section here on the left, and I'm going to open up leads because the first thing that you're probably going to do when you set up your Beatrix 24 is import your existing data into your CRM. This importing process that I'm showing you here is the same for leads, contacts, companies, and deals. I click the gear over here on the right and open import. I can browse to a CSV data file that contains the data to be imported. The file format is very important. If you're having difficulty, you can download a file here that has the proper format and practice with that. On the next screen, the columns from the file are on the left, and the fields in the Beatrix 24 CRM are on the right. I can choose what field to put the data from the column into. So here's a preview of the import. I click Next and the leads import. Leads can be brought into the CRM in, in this way. They can be brought in automatically from a website, by email, and also, of course, by hand. Now let's go down to the settings section of the CRM menu. This is at the bottom. I would encourage any administrative user to get very familiar with the settings of the Beatrix 24 CRM. The first thing that we're going to look at is selection lists. That might not mean much to you as a term, but it's pretty clear what's going on here. The first list is lead statuses. Okay. So these can be named, deleted. You can add additional lead statuses so that the unique path through which your clients go after coming in as a lead it can be represented in your CRM. Here's a list of lead sources, contact types, company types. Another important one is deal stage. It's very much like lead statuses. This is where the different levels of your sales funnel come from. Let's go back to the settings menu and look at currencies. You don't have to work only in dollars or euros. Create a currency, put in a name or symbol, an exchange rate if you want to report across various currencies, and then put in the display format. To create a custom field, give it a name and choose the data type. Note that you can even choose a file as the data type. If you create a custom field in leads, for example, regional code, and then you create another field, regional code, in contacts, then in the conversion process from lead to contact, that data will be passed over to the contact. Email integration. Here, I've set up a Gmail account, which my CRM will use as its own mailbox, meaning that mail coming into this box will be collected by my CRM. This field is particularly important. If this box is checked, I can then put the email address entered here in an advertisement or a response form, and incoming mail will be collected and placed in the CRM as a new lead. I can even assign it to somebody automatically if I want. So then I can work with each respondent directly from my CRM. Now let's look at the working interface of the CRM. This interface looks about the same for the various CRM objects, leads, contacts, etc. At the top, you have quick access buttons with counters that indicate active items under each heading. This filter bar allows you to create and apply filters to the general list. Expand the filter panel to modify and create new ones. Here you see I have a filter that sorts by the responsible person and also by a custom field that I put in. More fields can be added to the filter using this button. The list itself can be customized to suit the view that you need. Add or remove columns, rearrange them, and sort. 
The context button allows a large number of activities depending on the access permissions of the users. If we look at the individual lead view, we see an interface that shows the details of the lead itself, with more details being available here. Items associated with the lead can be found on these tabs, including workflow, also called business processes. This tab has a complete history of the lead's interactions. All actions taken and all interactions made with this lead can be logged and planned in the Activities tab. For example, if I make a task, the task that's created will be automatically associated with this lead. Likewise, I can log or schedule a phone call with this person. If I just got off the phone, I would simply mark it as complete, not pending, and put notes in it. Now you see that I have an upcoming activity for this lead. This activity will appear then in the My Activities section. When you send an email from the CRM, you have the option to put your own email address in the form. There are email templates that you can create in the Settings section that are accessible from here. Beatrix 24's CRM lets you keep all email communications right inside the customer's CRM record. It's very convenient. It's important to note that this CRM interface is duplicated in the mobile apps. You can add and edit, get reminders, and make calls directly to CRM contacts via iOS and Android. You can even generate invoices. You'll need to set up your CRM according to the type of products or services that you sell and according to the type of decision-making process that your clients go through. Here is a graphic that demonstrates two basic paths from lead to customer. The first, using only the violet boxes, is for a simple sales process. This is especially appropriate if you are only selling one thing, like a premium subscription to your website. In this scenario, a lead would be converted only at purchasing. After that sale, you would keep the data of the customer in your CRM as a contact for the purpose of support, newsletters, or other interactions after the sale. If you have a longer sales cycle, or for example, if you bring in thousands of unqualified leads into your system, you will probably designate a certain point where the lead is converted to a contact before a purchase is made. For example, when you establish personal contact with a representative of the given company. The advantage of conversion is that contacts, companies, and deals can all be associated with each other so that you can get a full picture of the sales process in the context of the relationship that you have with those people, that company, and their needs. So. Knowing that, let's look at the conversion process in the CRM. If I put the lead status bar on the last slot, I can either convert the lead or junk it. I'll convert it, and that brings me to a page where I can complete the conversion process. Data from the lead is automatically entered into the contact. I can fill in any other data that I have available at this time. Conversion can include the creation of a new company or I can associate the new contact with an existing company. Again, data is filled in. At the bottom, I have the option to create a deal as well. This contact, company, and deal that are all being created will be associated with each other. Note that you can associate and create new deals and companies later. Now I have a new contact created from that lead. You can see in the individual contact view that the interface is very much like the lead interface that we already looked at, except that here I have tabs that show the associated deals, invoices, and companies, along with the leads and other tabs. Now let's touch on invoices. The easiest way to make an invoice is to open any deal interface and click Create Invoice. You can put in a date for payment, and all of the data from the deal is brought into the invoice. If everything is correct and no other products or anything needs to be added, you can save and you will see a working interface for the invoice with a status bar, editing options, and options to print, view a PDF, or send the invoice via email. Information such as this address and the invoice number prefix, I just added the word prefix here as an example, all of that comes from the settings section. The address comes from the Payments Options section, 
and the prefix can be entered in other settings. Taxes can be set up as well. The Beatrix 24 CRM supports either a location-based regime, such as in-state versus out-of-state sales tax, or a VAT type of tax system. Lastly, let's look at access permissions. Access permissions are assigned to individual users, work groups, specific roles in work groups, or departments. CRM roles determine the level of access, and you assign roles in this drop-down. On the far right, you define each role's level of access according to the various CRM objects. Note that there are settings for various operations across the top, reading, adding, editing, deleting, importing, and exporting. Personal and department. This means that senior sales personnel can see contacts for which they are responsible, as well as contacts for which members of their department are responsible. Here are the various settings allowed. Note that deal stages and lead statuses can have individual settings put on them. Now, just for comparison, let me open up a sales manager role. You see that this is set up so that sales managers work only with the leads, contacts, and deals that they are responsible for. The CRM is available in Beatrix 24's cloud service as well as the on-premise version of the product. The most important difference is that in the on-premise or self-hosted version, there is more capability for integration with other enterprise software. For the user, the differences are minor. Constantly updated materials are available from Beatrix. We encourage you to check for new functionality and improved features often.